Hi everyone, we are here on Oasis of the Seas with Mario, otherwise known as Super Mario. And we're going to talk to him a little bit today about basically his thoughts on Icon of the Seas and a few other little popular topics. Mm -hmm. So first of all, thanks for sitting with me. I really appreciate it. Pleasure, Nick. Always good to see you, huh? Yep. So today is March 2nd, 2024. And just to let you know, whatever we say is just our opinions. We have no official stance from Royal Caribbean. We have no official inside information. So whatever we say is just our opinions. And we thought it would, you would find it interesting to hear what we have to say. So uh, a little bit about Mario. We're not here to go over, you know, his, his history and all that. You can look it up anytime on Alana Zingano. She's had really good interviews with you. Excellent, yeah. And so Mario, just if you don't know, briefly, he is the top cruiser on Royal Caribbean. He's been living on Royal Caribbean ships for 50 weeks out of every year for like the last 24 years. So he runs a business from the ships. And um, if anyone knows anything about cruising and Royal Caribbean ships, he's he's amazing. He's a wealth of knowledge and it's always great talking to him. Mm -hmm. And if you see him in his workspace, you know, he this we're in his office, by the way. I mean, <laughs> gosh, what could be better than this? <laughs> People can come by, you can say hi to him, you know, he's, he doesn't bite, and he, you know, if he's not busy, he may, you know, talk to you for a few minutes, but you know. I'm approachable, his, I'm yeah, approachable. he is approachable, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, there's times when I see him, he's in his computer, and he's working, you know, he's not just here having fun, he's it's actually working, he works like seven days a week, so, you know, just show some respect, if you see him really busy working, just kind of like say hi, and then move on, you know, so. Right. Um, so basically that's the brief background on, on Mario and we want to talk a little bit about the icon of the sea. So this is the world's largest, newest, most innovative cruise ship. It's the first new class of ships since the Oasis was introduced in like 2008, 2009. And the icon of the seas, I've been on it, he's been on it, that's why we're going to talk to him about it. It's got eight neighborhoods. Some of the neighborhoods are brand new. They got Thrill Island, they got Chill Island, they got the Aqua Dome, they got the Surfside Balcony. It's just an amazing ship. And I, and I spent 10 nights on it. And I was actually thinking that it was gonna be a one and done for me because I thought it's too big, it's gonna be too much stuff. And I absolutely loved it. That was my opinion. I loved it. I booked another one on it and the included food options are amazing i just can't believe the pearl cafe is my favorite hidden gem the aqua dome market they have a food hall and they have believe it or not the best drink that i found on the ship is in a can the painkiller in a can oh, really? from the aqua dome yeah. market okay. but anyway it's it's just an amazing ship shows and everything and it's got like i said eight neighborhoods it's got seven large pools, the largest infinity pools at sea, the largest pools at sea. It's got the six water slides, the category six water park. And I went on every one of them and man, they're intense. They're very intense. And they have an adult only area to kind of mirror up with Coco K. It's got the hideaway. And so that's 18 and older, and it's a beautiful space in the back of the ship, with the infinity pool that's suspended over. And when my wife saw that in the in rendering, she said, there's no way I'm going on that infinity pool, but it's actually amazing. So we have it booked. And so Mario, you've been on it for six nights and you know, the world wants to know, what are your thoughts on the icon of the seas? Okay, Nick. Well, first of all, <clears throat> let me say something about you. Uh, I've known Nick for many, many, many years, and uh, he is one of the top flow riding champions in the whole fleet. If you ever want to see him flow ride, you're going to be mighty, mighty impressed. And uh, he's a great friend, and I'm happy to do this interview with him. And so, uh, so yeah, I kind of see. Uh, you were on it for ten nights. Yep. I was on it for only six nights, but I got the lay of the land pretty much. And uh, what are my thoughts? Uh, I say if. If Oasis class was revolutionary, Icon is ultra revolutionary. That's the way I would describe it. It's a, it's a, it's a game changer plus plus oh, on top of Oasis. So uh, they have come up with an amazing product, and uh, you can tell by the way they're pricing it. They're pricing it, you know, a premium price for a premium product, which makes sense. Now, my thoughts, let's go over the main venues and the main areas. I would say, I love the Pearl. 
just coming into the ship and you see that big, big, big globe, the pearl, it's a great hangout place where if you just hang around there, you get to see a lot of people that you may know. You get to see a lot of crew that are walking by. So if you really want to socialize intensively, the pearl is the best place to probably be. You agree with that? Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. That's the showcase. For sure. Now, behind the pearl, on top of the pearl, Nick mentioned the Pearl Cafe. Absolutely incredible. Pearl Cafe is a much uh, upgraded place from the uh, Cafe Promenade. That took the place of the Cafe Promenade. And you can get, you know, specialty coffees, but you can get a lot of specialty sandwiches that you cannot get on Cafe Promenade. I love the classic sandwich yep. on the brioche bun. Turk, uh, it's got the sausage, egg, cheese, and ham. And then they have the steak, egg, and cheese sandwich on tiger bread and the muffins. The muffins, amazing. Yeah, amazing. great selection. Great place to, uh, to to grab a bite or to have breakfast or lunch or whatever, you know. But, you know, we sit there in the Pearl Cafe and you've got these uh, floor-to-ceiling windows. Uh, they have made the Royal Promenade now a two-story Royal Promenade, which is really the first in the, in the, in the, uh, in the fleet. And that makes a huge difference when you have floor ceiling windows. And you can circumnavigate the entire Royal Promenade on deck six. So from above the second level, exactly. you can go all the way around, unlike some of the other ships. You can't exactly. Hear. That just that that those windows make a tremendous difference. And by the way, the I try to get a sense of the width of the Royal Promenade. <laughs> because the original Royal Promenade was basically nine meters wide on, on the Voyager class and the freedom class this one is 33 meters wide that's 100 yeah. feet it's huge uh, i mean i don't know how they it's a marvel of engineering yeah. how they're able to, to stretch it to 33 meters and that was the original purpose of this pearl it's a superstructure that's way they can enlarge the promenade and have support yeah. and then they decided why not make it aesthetic as well and, and that was genius whoever came up with this complete genius, genius complete well royal's been a genius since the beginning of the royal promenade you know that, that whole area, that whole open space, horizontal promenade is, it's one of Royal's uh, engineering feats, I would call it. Yeah. Yep. So, sticking with, uh, with the venues, uh, we talked the Pearl Cafe, the Pearl, uh, the Aquadome Market. Mm. Nick mentioned that too, and I totally agree with him. The Aquadome Market uh, is like a food court, which again is a new concept for Royal, having a food court on board where you can visit many different uh, food venues and pick out whatever you like. Uh, they, have, uh, um, they have mac and cheese, they have preps, they also have uh, Asian, they have sandwiches. And so you can pick and choose like a food court you would. Five venues. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. Great. So, uh, and then you've got all your specialty restaurants, uh, you know, starting with a supper club which is a brand new venue, which basically replaces the chef's table. Did you right? get to go? No, <laughs> I did not get to go. I out. went twice and I'm gonna tell you about it. Yeah, and I'll tell you why, Nick. I am not big on food, to be honest with you. I'm a very simple guy. I like fast food, to be honest with you. I, I do, my favorite restaurant is Johnny Rockets. So I am very different from probably 99% of the cruisers. I love my fast food, mm -hmm. and I will eat fast food at the Aquadome Market and the Pearl Cafe and Johnny Rockets and, uh, you know, whatever little place they have sandwiches or burgers or whatever. Let me go back to Aquadome Market. There was a hidden gem in the Aquadome venue, mm -hmm. and it's in the very front, the Overlook. Right. What do you think about the Overlook? Well, that is, you know, that very unique, very, very unique. Now, the Aquadome itself, I thought that it was too small i think the aqua theaters on oasis class have more seating do you think that, yes, than the, yes. the seating was very small the best seating is actually up outside of the amphitheater seating because you can sit in chairs that have backs every seat in the aqua dome itself is it's just a bench exactly. and then there's no seat back and it's no. very uncomfortable to sit there absolutely for a while absolutely and, but i think it's really it looks smaller than the Oasis Class Aqua Theater, I, yeah. which to me it surprised me that it was that small. 
It looks bigger for you look at it from the outside. It looks big, but when you actually go in, it is really smaller than. Yeah, seating is very limited in there. And very limited. Yeah. So I didn't get to see the full aqua show because it wasn't ready yet. I, I don't know if you saw it. Only parts. It was not all ready. Only only pieces of it. Yeah, only pieces of it. And uh, so yeah, that's the aqua dome. A little bit too small, but okay. We'll have to see when it gets to the full full variety show. See what happens. Uh, I love the. Uh, the ice show, oh, the ice show. It was called absolute. Was it absolute zero? It's I think the, it was. Yeah, the venue yeah. is absolute zero. Yeah, and uh, the, the the technology in there is just amazing. The ice arena is like an oval shape, so they have more space available. It's a bigger ice skating surface, and it's oval. Yeah, it's not just supposed to be a, a rectangle or, or a square. And uh, let's see. Uh, I have to be honest and say I did not like. The Wizard of Oz. I saw it once, and then the next week I was on the ship. I didn't see it again. I've had too much Wizard of Oz in my childhood. I don't need to see it again. Yeah. You know, it's good for once, but that's that. That's about it. It's really mostly for kids. I like Mamma Mia better. <laughs> yeah. But you know, maybe maybe we should have said at the beginning that the icon was really targeted primarily for families with kids. Exactly. Primarily, not not that there's, there's no adult areas. There are adult areas, but the target market is families with kids. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, Wizard of Oz is great. It's a great show, but for people like us who've seen it like a hundred times in their life, you know. Right. It's not not. It's, yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, what else I also want to say? Uh, the neighborhoods. What about the the sweets sun deck, the grove? Okay, well, Coastal Kitchen, I got to experience Coastal Kitchen. It is, it is spectacular. It is a two-story Coastal Kitchen with a view to the Aqua Dome. Instead of being cut in the back of the ship, it's cut in the front of the ship with a view to the Aqua Dome, and it's pretty spectacular, no doubt about that. Some people, if you get window seating at the time of the show, you can have dinner in the Coastal Kitchen and a perfect view of the Aqua Show. Perfect, perfect. Now, I have to say, my favorite feature of the Icon Drum roll. The smart elevators. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. How can we forget that? Oh. Right? Oh, my gosh. Game changer. Oh, it is. You know, it's just so efficient, so practical, so uh, convenient, you know, to have smart elevators where you just press the button you want to go to and the elevator comes to you. It took me a couple of days to not reach over to push a floor. You walk in the elevator, you don't have to push the floor it automatically knows where you're going so you just walk in and you stand there yeah I, I wish we had that on all the ships but anyway uh it was really truly a uh, very revolutionary in my opinion the other thing i noticed as far as efficiency is they have figured out a way to route the flow of traffic many different ways to get to different areas except for the absolute zero that's the only place where there's one way in and one way out and that's through playmakers right. but like surfside you can get there different ways from above or below Central Park. You can get there from deck six. You can get there from deck five forward. I mean, there's many different routing that they figured out really good to get the flow of traffic to spread out. So they did a very really good well job. done. And with escalators, escalators, a lot of escalators. Oh yeah. There's yeah. Uh, in the back of the Pearl Cafe. There's actually stairs that go up right to Central Park, or you can go you know different ways. But yeah, the escalators going from deck five down to the casino. Yes. Or getting right. off the ship from the promenade, you have escalator down, then another turn and escalator down. And, yeah. So um, that's an, a very big innovation. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Grove, Sweet Sun Deck. Sweet Sun Deck, yeah. Yeah, again, it's a sweet. It's for sweets. It's not, not for the general public. Right. You know, so, uh, so that's, you know, you're paying a premium to be in a suite on Icon. So they're going to make sure you have a, a, an elegant experience. And a big premium. Oh, that's a big premium. <laughs> big premium. But in terms of the uh, the water slides and all the thrill activities, the way I look at it is they put Coco K on the icon. <laughs> Some people were calling this the Coco K of the seas. Absolutely. So uh, again, it's all for kids, for uh, you know, energetic seeking people, you know, that want to have adventure type of experiences. It works very well for them. And then they have the hideaway, which is at the after the ship. Yep. On deck. 15 and it's for 18 and older so the whole back of the ship 
on deck 15. It's above the surf side, and there's the, the infinity pool with the bridge. It's a suspended infinity pool, world's first. They got one side, it's got the loungers. Not a lot of shade on that side. And then the in-water loungers, they do charge for those. The infinity pool is amazing. And then they have on the other side, the hideaway uh, beach bar, or it's a pool bar. Mm -hmm. And it's a great place for views in the sunset, evening. It's, it's just a really cool area for adults. Right. Did you try the Flow Rider? I, you know what? I was surprised. I like the Flow Rider so much. This is the best Flow Rider in the fleet. So if you are into the Flow Rider, even though it is the inflatable, it's the best Flow Rider in the fleet. It's just amazing. Really? You really have the Flow Rider? Yes. Okay. I, I was on there with Pez. Oh, wow. Another me, champion. Yep. Pez was there. Me yeah. and him were the only two surfing on this on the preview sailing. So we had a good time. Right, right, right. Okay. So what do you think about the um, last thoughts on Icon of the Seas overall? Would you go on Icon of the Seas again? Let me be really honest. It would not be my favorite ship. Because it's more mostly geared for families with kids. I prefer other other classes of ships. I mean, I we're on Oasis, and this was amplified, and this is like the best of both worlds, in my opinion. It's yeah. got everything. It's just got amazing. Everything. I mean, I would go on Icon again, of course, but not at the premium price of charging. It's not worth it. It's just not worth no. it for me. Absolutely not worth it. No. You know, one of the things um, I may be different than a lot of people here. They could have easily put out a cigar lounge on Icon. It takes about 800 square feet, maybe, to satisfy cigar smokers and keep them in a sort of separate area. They used to have those cigar lounges. They don't have them anymore. I was disappointed that they didn't put a cigar lounge on the Icon. But hey, such is life. You know. Does Royal ever ask you for your input? Do they ever reach out and say, hey, we're thinking about doing something. What do you think? No. They don't ask you? No. Not for new ideas. Uh, they ask for my in, my feedback after the fact. Uh, but not, for example, they didn't ask me, would you think that cigar lounge and Icon would be a good idea? And I would give them, you know, 1,000 reasons why they should do it. But they don't. They don't. Yeah. That reminds me, I was, I got, I got to tour 25 different stateroom categories on Icon. And I have videos on my YouTube here. And one of the staterooms was a Sunset Junior Suite, which is, you know, for two people, probably like $10,000. And I'm doing my video and I noticed there's like very, very little closet. There's like one half of a closet, like basically half the size of closet space as a regular balcony. And I asked the Royal Caribbean staff that was there, where's the, where's the closets? And they were like, oh no, we better, we better send message to new build team yeah, so they're going to have to retrofit that cabin to take away the double couch and make it a single couch and then put more closet because it's modular so they can they can add another little closet to that but they didn't get feedback enough until we uh, did the preview sailing so what you're saying is that not there's not enough closet space on the sunset junior suite as opposed to the regular right. Junior suite right, and the other ship. Right, that, right. That's, a, that's really... You and know. they were surprised that I, someone even brought that to their attention. That's amazing. Um, you know, I think one day, and this is my opinion, they have godfathers of ships now, godmothers. They've had fictitious godparents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think one day he needs to be like a godfather. Yeah. You do, the godfather, really. Yeah. Well, you know, I think my opinion is I would I would like to keep the maritime tradition going of women of having exactly yeah. a godmother, but perhaps I would love to accompany the godmother, you know, to the stage and you know sort of participate in that ceremony. It wouldn't be bad. I always thought, and if Royals watching this, they need to have a cruise advisory group with uh, maybe a, a ten or so of the top seasoned cruisers like Mario or Andrew or. You know, or me, but I mean, Ooh, yeah. But just to kind of say, hey, we're going to brainstorm. You know, like for example, the Crystal Blocks. There was a big controversy when they said we're going to. Just one day they just said announce. Effective now, we're no longer doing Crystal Blocks. Oh my gosh, the uproar! One day later, they said, oh, okay, we're going to keep the Crystal Blocks because everyone was. If they would have asked people, you know, what do you think, we could have saved them some is sure. you know, issues. But you know, you're absolutely right, Nick. I think sometimes. That we have been so many years on Royal, sometimes Royal doesn't get it right. And the way to avoid that is to, I've always said the idea, bring a focus group on a ship, have a focus group 
give us some, you know, sandwiches, champagne, whatever, and get a group of 10, 15 top cruisers for that sailing and, and ask standard questions. So you get standard advice. Right. And it doesn't cost them anything. You've got your customers captive on the ship. You don't need to fly into Miami. And you get tremendously valuable feedback. Good idea. You know? They spend thousands and, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands of marketing to come up with a, a name or a concept that you could have done it for free just asking us. They spend a lot of money on consumer research. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. Lots of money. They have us captive on the ship. Take advantage of us. Have a focus group every, not every sailing, but do it statistically so you can get a, a really good sample of uh, feedback. And that way you avoid these, uh, you don't get it right type things, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. So, um, changing gears just a little bit. So the new ship's coming out. We've got uh, Utopia of the Seas coming out in July. And right now, Allure is the first ship Oasis class doing three and four night sailings. Right. They're going to swap it out with Utopia. So now this is going to be revolutionary. A brand new Oasis class ship coming out and right out of the gate, three and four night sailings. It's going to be amazing to see. But they want to get these first time cruisers out there to experience amazing ship. And there's no way anyone else can compete with Royal on the weekend sailings anymore. So that's going to be really interesting to see coming up. And furthermore, not only the Utopia, which is the new Oasis class, but the wonder is switching to three and four nights. Right. So you've got the two newest Oasis class ships converted to short cruises. Yep. That and does you a lot, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's very <laughs> difficult to for the crew because now two turnaround days a week. But I mean, it's it's genius because it's going to make them some money. So I hope it you know continues to be successful. Mm. All right. So switching gears. So you run a business from the ship. I work remotely. And uh, I rely heavily on the speed of the internet. So recently, well, last, I guess maybe two years ago, I know, they switched over to the SpaceX Starlink and fastest internet at sea. Um, supposedly, Virgin is now stepping up to try to compete and get the remote workers. Mm. And so a little, bit about, a little bit about the Voom internet. It is an upcharge. And if you have Diamond Plus, you get like one or two days for free and... If you're in certain levels of the casino, you get free internet. And mm -hmm. if you're Pinnacle, you get a free internet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, I think the free internet is like my favorite perk being a Pinnacle <laughs> because I really rely on it. Um, so how is it now with your ability to work? Do you see any limitations or have you had any issues? Nick, I have to say, I have to be brutally honest here. Ever since Starlink came online, I have had zero problems with internet speed or reliability or interruptions it's been seamless for me i can run the business i run the financial business and i do a lot of a lot of uh trading in the market from from here and that's very very uh you know very tricky if you don't get good connection you can end up doing the trade doing it twice or whatever mm -hmm. i've had seamless experience with boom i have nothing but to say the best about Boom. yeah good job yeah um so it's improved over previous tremendous when they had the satellite or tremendous whatever tremendous improvement and you remember the days when we used to have the dial-up oh remember that? yeah no wireless yeah you had to go to the internet cafe on the cave or whatever oh and then they would charge you a gazillion dollars an hour <laughs> yep um i know some people on the world cruise and then uh, i have friends that originally they were going to book the entire voyage and they run a business not not like yours but a different kind of business but they really heavily relied on internet and this was um something i said are you know you're not going to be able to be home every week in mm. case you have an issue you're going to be gone for the entire year are you mm. sure you want to depend on you know because if something happens and you know their business depends on it they decided to backtrack and maybe do shorter segments because they thought about it and they said you know what we're going to be gone for the entire time we better not chance it because that's mm. that's their livelihood but mm. and you know mario likes to be on you know ships that come back every week because he likes to go to mcdonald's for breakfast <laughs> or you know check on mm. things he has appointments so mm. he's got like the best of both worlds he's he's grounded but he, he's you know so yeah He's got a good idea. So a lot of people are always curious, how is it going to be? And, 
you know, you have to think of a lot of things, but you know, I think being home once a week at your home port is very important in case you never know. Plus, you because know. you need, I can recycle my clothes. So if I'm here, I'm, I'm on a ship for six months, which I do sometimes back to back for six months. You know, that's 50 cruises or whatever. Uh, I, I don't have to pack a lot, of, a lot of stuff. I can just pack for one or two weeks and then recycle every week. Yep. And, uh, and stop by my home base, check things out. You know, if I have to do something, a medical appointment or something, I could, I could do it on turnaround day and come back to the ship by, by the time it, uh, you have to be on board. Yeah. So some time ago, I, I remember I asked you your favorite itinerary. At that time, you told me Panama Canal. Still is. Still is. We just did the Panama Canal in November and December on the serenade, by the way, for uh, back to back uh, 28, 28 days. And it's still my favorite, my favorite itinerary, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, you get a little bit of Caribbean. You get a little bit of, uh, you know, you get, you get the, the crossing of the canal. You get Central America. And you get Mexican Riviera all in one package. Yeah, I know you. You often, well, sometimes you'll go to Europe and you do a European, but not very long. You don't stay there long. No, I just do the crossings. I do two crossings a year, April and uh, and November, and I don't I don't stay there very long because I've already been done all the European cruises. You've been you've yeah. been everywhere. Alaska. I've, I've been around everywhere. the world. I've been around the world. Everywhere. And what do you think of Alaska cruises? It's kind of like one and done for you. Or? Exactly. Exactly. I did two, and that was enough for me. I got it out of my system. <laughs> Just like Icon. Yeah. <laughs> I will go to Alaska my every few years, like one time and but we did Norway this earlier or last year and um, it was twelve night on the jewel the Norwegian fjord was one of the my bucket lists. It, it is an and amazing group. This yeah. year we're doing the Arctic crossing on the Ooh, jewel. Cool. That's the one I've always wanted to do. That's a bucket list item. It is. No doubt about bucket that. Bucket list. No flow rider, so I have to put uh, up with it. But okay. It'll be a different kind of cruise. Um, so now let's go to the topic of food. Now I have a food page on Facebook, Royal Caribbean Food Chronicles, 17,000 members because food is the number one topic of cruises. So that's the first thing people ask. And you went on a cruise, how's the food? Well, I, I, I mean, I know Mario's cruise are way more than me, but I'm on a ship like every other week and I cruise so much that the food to me is not a big deal. I, I skip exactly. meals. I don't have to go eat pizza two hours after I eat dinner. Exactly. And um, I mean, yes, there's been lots of changes over the years and there's no way you can fairly compare a cruise 15 years ago to today. You're just not going to get the same quality. There's just times have changed. Costs are, are important. And uh, there's lots of options and um, so what is your thoughts on the food well we already touched a little bit on that like you food for me is totally inconsequential it's at the bottom of the list yeah because I mean I've had all the specialty restaurants I've tasted all the foods I've tasted everything so now I'm basically a fast food guy I will enjoy going to Johnny Rockets or going to get some orders at the lounge or playmakers or something like that really it's just very very simple do you like johnny rockets or yes playmakers which one johnny rockets better burger better everything johnny rockets yeah and you can use your voucher yep you cannot use it anymore mm. on the uh, on the playmakers did you know that your pinnacle voucher oh oh your 25 dollar pinnacle voucher oh, okay. for you pinnacles out there wow you used to be able to use your 25 dollar voucher in playmakers not anymore okay I used it this week on uh, the port side barbecue. There you can use port it. Yeah, you can use it on port side. And I'm surprised they're still giving us that because we don't have a limitation to the coastal kitchen. They shouldn't need to give us the $25 voucher. And you know, it's only on Oasis and, and I think Quantum Plus. They yeah. don't do it in any other place. Right, right. So yeah, they kept that. Uh, yeah. One um, icon of the seas, no vouchers at no, all. No vouchers. No. Um, so what's your typical week like say this is a you know week cruise do you go to specialty once a week or rarely or you know I would say week? typical week is I of course my main activity on a cruise ship is working and running my business is is my number one priority okay once I get I'm done with the and I, I usually spend eight to nine hours a day running the business okay it's a it's a very seamless business very easy to run but I love to do it. I really love to do it. And my clients need me. 
So as long as my clients need me, I will continue to do it. The day they don't need me, I'll shut, shut it down. So most of the time I'm working, then when I'm not working, then I'm going up to the suite lounge to get some more girls, get a drink or whatever. So I'm so when you're on your typical week of food, like all oh, you mean food? Yeah, food. Oh. So breakfast I, is well, breakfast is very simple. Breakfast is uh you wanna know what I eat for breakfast? Well where, you know. Well, normally it's in a coastal kitchen. Mm -hmm. Or at the uh, at the dining room designated area for, for us okay. pinnacles, okay. Breakfast for me is important. It's the only meal that's really important. I skip lunch. I don't do lunch. And then dinner is very light dinner, either at Coastal Kitchen or in the main dining room or at Johnny Rockets or orders. How often do you do a specialty dining? Whenever we get invited. <laughs> and is your favorite still hibachi, teppanyaki? Well, it, it is my favorite hibachi. However, it's, as of late, it's becoming a little bit too much food now. Yeah, So yeah, I agree. Yeah, but it's still my, my favorite. So if I get invited to a specialty restaurant, I'll say yes. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to go. So if, if, if someone were to ask, what is the, you know, they want to have a special occasion, anniversary, and they're on an Oasis class, and, and they, what's your recommendation for the best specialty dining for, you know, a, a couple anniversary, most elegant specialty dining, what would you say? Uh, for a group of people? Just for two. Oh, just for two people? A nice, intimate, elegant specialty dining but probably i would say if you say specialty dining i would probably say chops chops or gil run either one is fine no what problem. about 150. i don't like 150. it's <laughs> too exotic for me okay i have never <laughs> been to 150 central park uh, never i can't believe it it's just they give you a you know a selection of little little portions and i'm not i'm not into that so uh yeah yeah uh, i will not do 150. No, no. okay so that's your food. And let's, one more little topic here. So a lot of the, it seems like more of the older people or the veterans, they keep asking for new smaller ships because a lot of the people that are older, they're not into the water slides and all the bells and whistles. They want a smaller intimate ship. They love the Radiance class, the Vision. They're getting old and they want these the Royal keeps building new Oasis, new, bigger, 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 you know. And everyone says, when are they going to build new smaller ships? And so yeah. Royal has a, a new sort of an idea and a box called the Discovery Class. I think uh, when Oasis was originally conceived, it was a Genesis class. Right, correct. And so now we have the Discovery Class. And so people keep asking at the captain's corners and... You know, the only thing I've heard was Royal said we're considering it. But, I mean, eventually, these vision of the seas, the enchantment, the grandeur, eventually they're going to outlive their service life. And, you know, Royal's going to have to look at replacing them. What do you think? What's your opinion on this? Okay, well, I think the Discovery class, I think it's still at the rumor stage. I haven't heard anything official saying we're going to have a Discovery class. So I just want to make that caveat. It's a rumor so far. It's a rumor. It's a rumor. It may, may be discovery. It may be something else or nothing else or whatever. No, you're right. I think a fleet of ships is like a fleet of cars. As as the as the cars age, as the ships age, and you bring in new new uh, ships into the fleet, eventually you have to replace. You have to sell the old ones. You have to get rid of them. And Royal has done that over the years. And it will have to come the day where the Vision class and eventually the Radiance class will have to be replaced. So, yes, I've heard the rumor that they're going to go small to, to try to uh, replace those, uh, especially the Vision class. They're going to go small. Now, the question is how small. I don't think they're going to go that small. <laughs> I think they're going to still have it big, but not, not Oasis big. Right? I don't know, is that it's no secret that the more staterooms they have, the more money they make. And uh, there was a time they were retrofitting the Voyager and the Freedom class, and they were getting rid of certain venues like the nightclubs and other areas, and they were building staterooms. And even on the Voyager and Freedom class, they have many of the spa massage rooms they were taking out and putting in staterooms. Right. So the more staterooms they can have, it's, and they're optimizing the revenue because, I mean, the ship's going to sail. 
anyway, the costs are going to be pretty fixed. But the more people they can get paying revenue, it helps exactly. the bottom line. So, because that, that ship is a fixed cost operation. Yeah. It's, it's really fixed cost. So, so volume is critical. You know, the more volume you have, the, the lower the unit cost is, right? Right. But I think, you know, when, when the new class comes out after Icon, it'll be after Icon class, it'll be smaller, sm or small as they say. I don't think it's going to be that small, but they, they'll have to tell us whenever they're ready to go to press for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never got a chance to. Okay, so next, I have one more topic I just thought of. I never got a chance to ask you. This is before the world cruise was. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know, I don't think you're going on any segments of the world cruise. None, none whatsoever. It's just not your cup of tea, I guess. No, it doesn't work for me. Yeah. Yeah, it does not work, no. No. Uh, some people ask me if I was, and I, you know, no. I, I personally, you know, what works for me is, you know, I like to be on a cruise no more than two weeks at a time before I go home. Right. Because I have obligations with work and home right. and everything. Right. And uh, so I, I actually told people, I said, I wouldn't go on the world cruise if it was free because I just couldn't be gone that long. And I, I, I would rather pick the places I want to go and then come home, you know, so I could be gone for three weeks if it was a really cool place. But, you know, I don't want to go in between and just, you know, I want to be like Liberty Mutual, only pay for what I need. Exactly. So I didn't want to have a waste of that. I'll give you my opinion. I agree with you. The reason, the one reason I wouldn't go on a world cruise, even for free, is because I don't want to see the same faces for 270 days. Yeah. It would drive me bananas. Yeah. You know, the same pinnacles, the same people every day. No, thank you, but no thank yeah. you. Yeah. I thought about that right. too. <laughs> if you see people you don't like, and then you know, you gotta live You're with stuck them. with them for 270 days. Yeah, I'm already hearing of, you know, there's divisions within the, the group. So, you know, there's a, a, a select number that are on the, for the full voyage. And so they kind of look down upon the the uh, the downliners that come in and you know be part part of the voyage, and so they all get you know oh well I'm on for the full voyage you're only on for one and you know, exactly. oh, it's, it's become a caste system yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah it has <laughs> and so you know the future looks very bright for Royal Caribbean and everyone that just keeps coming on cruises it helps us all because you know they'll keep cruising and. Um, oh, I got to meet Richard Fain for the first time. Really? Wow. Icon. Okay. Okay. So he happened to be walking by by himself, and I grabbed him and I, you know, took a photo and I said hi. And I just said, you know, everyone misses you. That's yeah. all I could say. Yeah. Absolutely. Everyone misses you. And he he saved the company through the print. He brought the company through the pandemic. That's my opinion. He brought it through the pandemic. We had financing capital. They got enough to stay afloat. And you know, when his job was done, it was ready for him to enjoy life. To move on, yeah. And uh, so now we have the new ships coming. And you know, uh, well, bottom line is here, we both love Oasis, uh, um, Oasis of the Seas, but man, Icon is a game changer. And so it does cost a little more, but. Let me tell you about Richard Fay. Richard, I've known Richard for many years on a one-to-one -one basis. And I know his whole history. Richard Fain not only saved the company from the pandemic, Richard Fain built this company from scratch. He became CEO of Royal in 1988 when the company was in in its infancy. Mm. And he's the guy that really propelled Royal into what it is today. You know, he's a genius. He, 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 he pretty much had every input in designing ships and uh, making key decisions and he built this company, let's face it. So, what a well-deserved uh, semi-retirement because he's still chairman of the board. And I did see him on Icon too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was one of the persons, you know, I, I admired for a long, 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 long time. And, you know, I, I always said, you know, in my mind, you know, people say, if you could want to meet anyone, who would you want to meet? And he was on top of my list. And, man, I was, I was like, I couldn't just flourish him with enough comments and he just says you're so you're too kind you're you're so nice and and he said i'm lucky he said i am very lucky i said yeah i'm lucky to meet you but yeah he's yeah. just yeah, he amazing. built the company no doubt about it and he built the team the team that's running the company which in my opinion is the best management team in the industry second to none uh 
and the stock price proves it. Yep, it proves it right there. Yep. Okay, it's Richard's uh, doing. That's his doing. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Well, I want to thank you so much for. It's a great interview, talking. Rick. Fantastic. It's just, I mean, this guy's just amazing, and I know you're going to be getting back to work, <laughs> checking on things. Um, but once again, thanks for tuning in. Give it a thumbs up. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Ciao Take for care. Now. Take care.